biggest lie I've ever told while investigating. I remember being surrounded by Nazi skinheads who asked me if I was Jewish. And I lied then. I said I was Church of England. Right, uh, this is who I am. I'm a writer and I'm going to answer questions about my career. Most unexpected place to find a story. I was on the set of Stepdaughter Cheerleader Orgy, uh, a porn film. The reason why they call their films things like Stepdaughter Cheerleader Orgy is because of search engine optimization. You need to put like the most searched terms in a porn title these days. So I said, well, are there anybody who, um, who isn't searchable, who kind of slips through the cracks? And the answer is customs custom porn, where if you've got a porn film that you really want to see, but it's so weird, nobody will ever make it, you can now commission professional porn people to make this porn film just for you. So in The Butterfly Effect, I then went off to find the most amazing customs. Craziest thing you've done while investigating a story. I'd heard that there was a secret club called Bohemian Grove where the rich and powerful have a mock human sacrifice. So I thought that can't be true. So I snuck in there with Alex Jones, the conspiracy theorist. And sure enough, it was true. Alex then went back and made a video called Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, in which he told the world that we might have witnessed an actual human sacrifice, which we hadn't. And that adventure then set Alex on the path to conspiracy superstardom. Unluckiest moment of your career. I went UFO hunting with the pop star Robbie Williams and we kept on just missing alien encounters. People kept like saying to us, oh, you know, if you'd been here like two hours earlier, two extraterrestrials were biting each other on the side of the road and you just missed it. Longest you've ever pursued a story. My book Them took me five years to write. The debutante took me three years on and off. What else am I going to do? Like, I don't know, just sit there? The craziest blind side of your career. That's the time I was chased through Portugal by the private security guards of the Bilderberg Group, a secretive organisation that conspiracy theorists believe secretly rule the world. The good news is if you know you're being followed, they're probably just trying to intimidate you and the dangerous ones would be the ones that you don't know are following you. That was scant comfort, because what if they were the dangerous ones and I just happened to be naturally good at spotting them? Most expensive journey to do a story. I don't know, I'll, I'll go around the world for like a line, seriously, for like, for like a paragraph. There's no stopping me. The story of yours that deserves more attention. So I did a story called Who Killed Richard Cullen, which was about all the people who came up with the secret tricks to keep us enslaved when we have credit cards. And it was such a, like an important story. And, and because it was about the credit industry, no one cared because it seemed like boring. Best interview you've ever gotten. I liked going to Florida to meet <laughs> When I was writing The Psychopath Test, I really wanted to meet people who had been described as corporate psychopaths. So I wrote to him to say that I believe, you know, I believe that you may have a very special brain anomaly uh, that makes you interested in the predatory spirit. Can I come and interview you about your special brain anomaly? So he said, come on over. So I went through the psychopath checklist with him. I said, cunning manipulative. He said, that's leadership. And he redefined each of the items on the psychopath checklist as business positives. I love to check. Story that made you the most emotional. I really love my Audible show, The Last Days of August, about a porn star who took her life. But I started making that show when she'd only been gone for like a month, a couple of months. And I, I guess I wish that I'd maybe waited six months or a year and done it then. I was trying to figure out what led her to take her life. And to do that, it meant I had to talk to people who had made mistakes, who had done things wrong. But that didn't mean they murdered her or anything. It just means that they made human mistakes. It was just too, you know, raw and personal for people. Do you like the sound of your own voice? I think I like the sound of my own voice when people say that they like it. And then I don't like the sound of my voice when people say that they don't like it. This is more like it. Now I feel like I'm on fire. You found your groove, John. Yeah. Scariest moment of your career. 
I've had a few. I was I was outed as a Jew, and Omar Bakri, the guy who was in charge, said, "Look at me with the infidel John, who is a Jew." And they all went, "Ah!" And I said, "Well, surely it's better to be a Jew than an atheist." And I heard someone go, "No, it isn't." What's the conspiracy theory that you most believe in? For the longest time, I believed in the Oklahoma City bombing conspiracy theory that Timothy McVeigh had help from this mysterious group of men who would meet at this eccentric white separatist church called Aryan Nations and that the government covered it up. And one of the things that I wanted to do in the debutante is try and figure out whether that conspiracy theory is true or not. Silliest you've ever felt in an interview, like every interview I've ever done. When you listen back, oh my God. I don't think my brain is working quite as well as it normally That's does. Right. Least favourite story you've told. Maybe so you've been publicly shamed, but I, I love the book, don't get me wrong. The reason why it's my least favourite story is because it just shines a light on what monsters ordinary humans are. That was depressing. Biggest mistake on the job, joining Twitter. If you're lucky enough to, to be able to write like books or, or you know have a platform, why do you want to like ruin it all by being like an idiot on Twitter? Best advice you've ever gotten. Don't wait for people to give you permission to go off and do stories. No one is gonna give you permission to do it. Just do it. Last question, what's the show that you're most likely to plug? It's my new show for Audible. It's called The Debutante. So yeah, that's, that was a lot of career extremes. And I'm John Ronson. <laughs>